so these are the things guys we are going to talk about in today's session there is something just called by the name of load balancer what actually a load balancer is why it makes our life much more easier that's the thing so what's the kind of uh, you know what functionality what's the benefit we have in a respective organization if we have something which is called by the name of load balancer then we have something also uh, what is data state different kind of a data states we have in place so we will talk about that as well then we have exploring the block and file storage what that particular means and then we're going to talk about a very important service when it comes to the encryption in the particularly in the uh, in the gcp right which is called by the name of kms cloud kms we're going to talk about in the context of the gcp fine that's the kind of thing correct and then at the end of the session we have a very interesting topic in place very interesting as well as very important which is called by the name of vpc virtual private cloud right so these are the objective guys which we have for the day three in place perfect but there are still uh, because in yesterday's session still some of the topics are still left so we'll be proceeding ahead with those uh topics that are left right and then we will move to the load balance rounds kind of stuff in place okay great perfect so at the last time yesterday's session we were talking about machine family okay there is something which is called machine family and machine type we should be aware about what they means so machine family means that different kind of a families you have in place right okay i will be showing you uh, because again we will do the particular practical uh yesterday that i repeated that i did a particular practical where you're connecting using the rtp but the problem was that many people were not able to you know understand it up a creation of a server is the first step i would say it's same thing like whenever you're starting up in the programming the first thing you write is hello world right that's it any kind of a thing that's that generally it's a routine so same same way it goes with the cloud as well so whichever cloud platform you are uh, learning it the first thing you activity you will be doing it up into it is running up or you know booting up a server in place right whenever you understand all the basic terminologies basic criteria what are the what are those critical components that builds up a server right then you get up some sort of an idea that okay how this particular ecosystem of this cloud provider really works so there are two things right machine family and machine type as i will be explaining you right now okay so let me open it up this is the gcp i have so the first thing is that you just click into this navigation menu and a lot of things you have in place like i am marketplace vertex ai compute engine and plenty of them that we talked about in yesterday's session in place fine okay so now what i will say i click into it and i had this compute engine and this compute engine i want to create up a server vm instance another thing is that if you let's say for example you want to just get up an idea about what kind of activity is going on you click into it and see deleted the vm instance one seven minutes ago created a vm one and it's boot disk 36 minutes ago so all these kind of a log you have in place 15 hours there was a problem going that that's a uh, problem here right so you any kind of an activity you do whenever that particular activity is being performed uh, this particular uh, you know you get up a notification that okay a server has been deployed a vm has been created a snapshot has been created up all these kind of things in place whenever you the particular task that you have given it up in the gcp it fills up in that particular criteria what will happen is that in that particular scenario what really happens is you get up a alert like this right when i was study getting up a instance group which i will be telling you what's an important of this instance group is because it's a very important component when it comes to creation of the load balancer so when i was creating it up due to any reasons i get up and i you know this see this task has failed so here we are let's create up a server again right and now look closely what i am trying to do in this particular case once you get up a good idea how to create up a server and you're good to go fine okay and as we progress ahead because uh, yesterday at the last of the session we were doing this kind of thing that's the reason many people faced up an issue okay great so what you need to do is that you need to be present into kind of service which is called by the name of compute engine you click into create an instance fine and then you have to specify the name of the instance it's for your own simplicity always remember it up in your respective organization or in your respective server or in your particular cloud you can have in a gcp as well you can have two servers with exact same name fine so the name is not 
the issue why because the name is for our own simplicity it is not for the system it is for our own understanding this is server one this is server two so in short if someone asks you in the interview that can you have two servers with exact same name yes you can have you can have hundred thousands of servers with exact same name but yeah definitely for sure from an organization point of view so what happened in that particular case is that this is it so again so what okay why did it giving me error there was extra space that was an issue so okay so how does that particular aws architecture understand that if hundred of servers are running it up with one or with the name one 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 okay how it identifies it gives up an specific id a unique id to each server each resource you have in place okay there you have a region and now let's talk about the region where i will be deploying it up guys uh, when it comes to the gcp infrastructure what are those two components present there region and zone we have same here region and zone we have right now inside it perfect okay so right now i have multiple regions to choose from i am going with north virginia it's completely up to you based upon multiple factors compliance uh, latency okay all a lot of factors are there based upon that you shall choose it up i choose north virginia and zone i could say let's say for example us east a so i choose the availability zone a it has a b and c it means three availability zones are present set it up fine okay now let's talk about the machine configuration in this particular machine configuration you can see what you can see different different families you have in place fine okay so you said see inside this normal general purpose you have different kind of families so this what they do is that they make sure this is IaaS infrastructure as a service so i choose the operating system i choose the you know application data uh, everything is been controlled by me but the back end stuff okay the i would say you know what they do is that they create a multiple copies of your respective data all this kind of things the cloud service provider does right to make sure that if this particular server fails uh, they are able to help you into it but it has limitations right that's the thing we have so if you want a good level of availability you have to go with something which is called the load balancers fine and that they have something which is called health check what it does is that if one of the server fails to work automatically that particular server is removed a new server has been created and automatically attached to the load balancer in place so in this case right now what i will be you the server that i'm creating it up in that case the availability is very limited okay other than that if let's say for example you want an automated system which keeps on automatically monitoring the stuff in the back end what happens in that particular case is that you have to um, go for some some services in place like the load balancer in place right which has health check which continuously monitors the performance the health of your server and if your particular health of the server deteriorates or it stops to work what it will happen is that it will eliminate it up okay so let's stick with it fine ec2 so this is the one we have the ec2 so ec2 is what ec2 is a family right let's go back to it uh, let me just see where you have the family right now we are talking about machine family machine means hardware part fine okay so here we see this is the family c3 is a family c3d is a family ec2 is a family n2 is a family fine so these are the different different families we have in place based upon my respective requirement i am choosing up the uh, family right now i am choosing ec2 which is low cost day to day computing in place got the idea these are the different different families we have okay general purpose perfect so these are what called these are the machine family great now after this after i have selected up this particular e2 right e2 i just scroll down and now let's talk about what let's talk about different kind of machine type and here we have machine types here we have the machine types so in this ec2 inside the ec2 we have different kind of a subcategories as well that we choose it up in the machine type so two things are there machine family these each one c3 c3d e2 n2 all of them are mach families and inside the families there are machine types okay let's as see it up for the e2 so i click into this particular part and see shared one i have e2 micro e2 small e2 medium okay then you have e2 standard 2 e2 standard 4 e2 standard 8 so what they are they are your respectively machine type clear they are uh, present inside your family 
clear that's the case i click into high memory so now all uh, e2 so you see that all are e2 but they have different different role now if i just say for example high cpu i want see e2 high cpu 4 e2 high cpu 8 so that's the thing what the idea what is a family this is a family let's say for example now i want to change a family i want to change a family to t2a with scaled out workload so i scroll down okay it's not visible in this particular region see that's the reason right it's not available in this particular region or the availability zone fine so okay so let's come back let's see if any another we have in place okay n2 is there balanced pricing and performance i click into it right now here see n2 standard 2 n2 standard 4 n2 standard 8 so all these different different types i have present inside the family okay there is a family with the name of n2 and inside it up you have multiple other members in place based upon your specter requirement you can choose any of the member same with the e2 so let's stick with the e2 part and right now in the e2 i'm choosing what i'm choosing e2 medium okay okay perfect now let's click it with it okay great so that's you got an idea what is the machine family you have this e2 n2 and inside this machine family you have machine and types me memory member of that particular machine which is like e2 standard 2 e2 standard 4 e2 standard 8 e2 standard 16 e2 standard 32 right that's kind of thing so that's the thing and we choose any of it so actually we first of all need to specify the family then we specify the machine type okay perfect great so we have selected e2 medium which contains of one core of cpu and 4 gb of ram in place great and okay perfect so a lot of things are there so they put cannot much be just to compare with it okay why it is such an issue north virginia zone is one if this kind of an area errors you get it up random errors fine the root disk architecture might be 64 to compatible with the machine type you click into it and look look let's look so advanced configuration uh, okay this is the boot disk this is actually your hard disk you have fine okay if this is kind of a problem a random problem you're getting it up just refresh your page and start it from there okay okay let me just name it once again one this is the region let's just uh, stick with the north virginia uh, it could be anyone fine e2 i would say this is the one standard okay and i'm not I'm, right now i'm not getting it i click into it operating system there is multiple operating system i have in place i stick with windows server okay see different type of disk persistent this is a hardware virtual hard disk what kind of disk you have on ssd uh, balance one extreme persistent ssd one right ssd will provide you a better performance so i stick with the balance performance. so it means short right now i'm choosing the hard disk what kind of hard disk i need for this particular server to work upon okay i'm using about much more balanced one but i have an option of ssd as well which will be very pretty fast but it will be expensive as well then the size of that particular hard disk is 50 gb that i'm creating it up okay i click into the select part great okay i scroll down and here i have multiple options about it to the firewall part i click into allow http traffic okay great and we have other options as well people come into these different different options okay uh, when it let's say for example when it comes to the vpc and all kind of stuff okay great now let's click into the create if everything done correctly what will happen is that the server will be deployed up okay the server with the name of one so guys this particular server is being in a process of deploying perfect so it's now working fine so guys as you can see it up when the server is there up and running you refresh it up and you get two things internal ip or external ip so internal is the private ip and the external ip we have is the public ip okay so yesterday what we did is that we kind of did a very small demonstration we will be doing up that same thing today as well to show you how to do about a static ip okay great perfect so now let's connect to it let's throw up a web server into it let me show you how to do that what you need to do is that you click into it fine it says this particular part 
two things here. One thing is that if you are a normal Windows user, you go to your search bar, type RDP, and there you put up the username, password, and this particular thing. Fine. Other thing is that if you do not want to do that particular part, you click into download this RDP file. If you are using a third-party client, I click into it. Even if I'm using up a Windows system, but still I use it up. Okay. I click into it, and this is the pop-up that I get it up. Right. Automatically, it has selected my IP address, my public IP of my server. Fine. Okay. So you have two choices how to do it up. This is where it is. Now it's connecting. Okay, a error has right now. I'm getting an error, right? Okay, don't worry. Anytime you face up an issue related to errors or anything like that, read the error. And sometimes the errors are due to technical issues, which is not your respective fault. So, what will happen in that particular case is that wait a minute, give it a minute. I would like to give it because this is giving me an error. I would like to wait at least two minutes more because when you would start launching up a VM, a lot of stuffs are there. Fine. This is the rule of troubleshooting. Always remember it up, particularly in the cloud, irrespective of the cloud vendor. So whenever you are creating up a thing, deploying up a stuff in place, always remember whenever you're doing this kind of a thing in place, right? Sometime, uh, you know, things, a lot of things are doing on in the back end. So just give it a minute, right? Okay. So let's give it a minute or two to settle down the things in the back end. And then what we'll do is that we will again proceed ahead. If I still get up an error, what I will be doing is that because I have done all the configuration correctly, I will be removing this particular server and creating up a new one in place. Okay. So let's refresh it once again. Perfect. Now again, go to the tell RTP. Click, click into this particular. Okay. Everything looks fine in this case. Connect to it. We are connecting and see this is the thing we have get it up, right? Okay, that's the reason. See, I have not done any kind of a modification. Previously, I was getting up an error. Fine. Now, no problem. Automatically, in the previous part, just before it, within a few minutes back, automatically the RDP connection was already terminated, saying that some internal errors were there. Internal due to some internal issues, you are not able to connect it. Now, automatically, the problem is also just give it a minute to breathe it up. Okay, perfect. So now let me just put up the username and a password for that. And how to get up the username and a password you click into it and here you get it up get windows password you click into it this is the username it's completely up to you you can change it up even after after as well as well you can change it up for the security reasons okay i'm sticking with it you click into the set fine so this is going to be my username fine now this is the particular password i have okay so i come back to it i here paste up the password click ok and this is the pop-up that i get it up right okay i click into the yes part and it's the uh you can see it up it's loading right now perfect the rdp guys had started okay here we can see it up it's starting up right yesterday that we did it up okay so what uh, guys we will be doing is that we will be hosting up a web server. So always remember, this is the rule of troubleshooting. Give the machine the VM to time to breathe. Fine. If still the problem persists, look for the proper solutions. Even if you have done everything what is written there, sometime it's not. And most of the time I would say it's not your fault. If you have done everything, everything correctly, what happens in that particular case, completely restart the instance or terminate the instance and create up a new VM or new instance in place. Okay. So you can see server manager is running it up. I will be installing up a server manager right now. Okay, just give me a moment. Okay, as you can see, it's right now scanning it up. We have to just be a little bit patient with it. Fine. Why it is so? Why it's going to take up a time? Because guys, remember the hardware configuration. We are going to use it up. It's little bit, uh, you know, it's not up to the mark. It's I would say it's it's pretty cheap. That's the reason it's taking up a time. Fine. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to host up a web server. I click into the role and features, go to the next part, and I click into the next. I will be installing up a web server. See, web server I have in place. I select it, I add the features, and let's install a web server inside the server in place. I click into the next part, next, next, and you have installed it up. Okay, so we have started this particular installation of the respective web server. Fine. Okay. So let's wait for this particular installation to complete. It will take a minute or two. 
right again the installation completely process depend upon your hardware configuration because we because this is just uh, you know uh, just for the simplicity just for the understanding i have used a very small limited hardware configuration which has only two core of a cpu so it's not such a powerful machine but yeah definitely when you're in your real environment you will be using up a machine which could have 20 core cpu and all kind of stuff which will be pretty pretty fast and pace so this particular installation would take a hardly few seconds in place okay so it's all the game of which kind of hardware configuration you choose but remember the better the performance the better the price would be okay the higher the price so if the things gets completed processed in within few minutes it should definitely for sure you are going to pay a huge price for that so that's nice so you should be aware about those kind of a scenario where to go for high end performance where to go for mid range and where to go for low end so for this particular session i have selected the low end in place fine okay great so let's wait for it it's still installing fine so you can see the feature has installed into it fine the installation has been taken place perfect now what happens to this particular case is that the web server has been installed now i will minimize it up i will be going to my particular c drive i go first of all to the file manager fine and here i go to this particular this pc and then this particular pc i go to the c drive there is i not net pub this www root and this is that particular file guys which has been created where okay that's case perfect so got the idea now what I, uh, that particular file was there this is the particular file we have which has been created when we install up the uh, web server and this contain all the information that how the web server would by default would really looks like which picture to display and all these kind of things in place right so now the web server has been installed in this particular uh, server the server one fine okay see guys this is the what you get it up okay so always remember just give it up a time i have just refreshed it multiple times and when i refresh it up okay i just again cancel it fine okay come back to the server copy up the public ip now when i copy that particular public ip i, I paste it up but you see that this is kind of this is, is the web server the starting of the web server you can change the content of it right that's kind of thing you can display one message that okay hello welcome to the amit session this kind of thing you can do it up as well so this is we have hosted up a web server over this server right with the name of one perfect clear guys okay now now let's talk about the images okay so guys what comes to your mind when we say about the images so i would say the operating where do you see your images heavy than this particular part yes we have we have covered this images when i go to creation of a server it's irrespective of any region i scroll down and here you can see it up and i have an option which is called by the name of boot disk in this particular boot disk you see image right now by default it is debian okay i can change it up i can change it to windows server so all these things you are saying it up debian fedora okay rocky linux Ubuntu, Ubuntu Pro, all these are what? These are the images you have in place, the operating system. I'm using it up the Windows servers. Click it to the OK and see now the image for this particular server, the operating system for this particular server has changed to Windows Server 202 data center. Okay, so image is nothing. It's like your operating system. You go to the boot disk, click into it, and now you have this operating system or the image. Clear? That's what it means. Perfect. Now I, I, let's understand what a custom image is. Fine. Custom image means that you have an operating system by default, and now in that particular operating system, what you're doing is that you are adding some stuff. You are making a little bit of a changes into that particular part. What I mean is that before doing a hands-on thing, what I mean is, let's say for example, this is a normal operating system which has been provided to me. Okay. Listen very, very carefully and it's windows it's hosting up a window fine normal now what happens is that as the day goes by i install some kind of an applications into it so generally the operating system i was having was only windows purely windows and after that i installed it up some application there is some kind of data present there so what i have done is that now i have this op image is what it's an operating system custom means that i have added my applications into that particular operating system it same theory whenever you go to the market right and purchase up your brand new laptop what happens is that very limited amount of information or the data or a file or folders are present inside it up 
okay very limited amount of it what you do is that you will hold that particular operating system a brand new laptop with the operating system in place you open it up boot it first time and as the day goes by after six or seven months you have installed multiple applications you have installed vlc media player fine so after installing after customizing it up someone would be installing vlc media player someone would be installing some other media player okay vlc media player and then your operating system you have in place that is called the custom image or custom operating system for so far what will happen is that for ganesh your operating system would be different in your operating system you have the operating system you can have some application uh, a1 fine which could be like for devops fine then you can have application a2 which could be like for photo editing fine those kind of things for shelby it could be operating system which is always there but another kind of an application he have a3 which is uh, i would say a, a kind of a game in place so those kind of things fine in my case i have multiple other a plenty of applications so you see that you have customized your application as per your respective need you have customized your respective laptop or your operating system that's what the custom image means custom means that you have made up a changes into that particular operating system so operating system hold up some application additional application into it and definitely for sure at it is per as your own convenience you have added into it fine great it same philosophy if i just again want to relate it up it same thing like a image is like an operating system you can imagine like it's your respective car fine okay you go to the showroom and you have a different different kind of cars in place so we customize our car right guys what it comes to your mind when i say customize your respective car you receive that car you own the car and then particular respective preference of a family members you will you know just change the uh, the leather of that particular chair or okay or the, or the tires all kind of thing in place right so you have customized your respective car you have, that's the same way here you have customized your operating system as well fine that's what we do okay. and then what i can do that particular operating system which i have customized with certain application in place i can share with you guys as well so you does not need to install that application now you just install that complete custom image and you are good to go fine that's the catch here great so let's how to create up a custom image what i will be doing is that i have already up a server fine from this particular server i will be creating up this custom image fine that's the catch so let me just show it that thing to you perfect uh let's cancel it up okay perfect and again refresh it up this refresh is very handy fine any kind of an activity modification you're doing it up uh make up a habit of refreshing it at regular interval or time don't refresh the complete uh page but i would say refresh this entities this resources at a regular interval of time okay great so now what happens is that i want to create up an image fine okay one more interesting thing about the image part before just actually doing for the hands on thing in the image the information is only about your operating system so let's say for example guys tell me when it comes to a machine or a server right whether local machine or actually a server what are the two important component guys we have for this particular machine servers can i say operating system and hardware so hardware software fine so you have the operating system and you have another thing is called the hardware fine your ram your processor all comes from the hardware part and another thing you have in place is your respective operating system so what happens is that whenever i'm from this particular server i am creating up the custom image in that particular scenario guys what the thing is that only the operating system is being copied right not the hardware part only the operating system the application it holds the data it hold is been copied and now this is separately called the custom image fine and now this custom image can be used in inside up a server so when let's say for example now afterwards i am creating up a server so in that particular op i need up an operating system so either to go to windows ubuntu that way what i can do is that i can use this custom image in my particular oh my god fine so what i will be doing is that i will be in my new server i will be having that particular custom image from the previous server and the hardware i can change it completely as per my respective demand okay the hardware h1 can be in very brand new hardware but this would be your custom image 
operating system with an application in place. Fine. That's what you can do in this particular part. Got the idea what we are trying to do? We have a particular server and from it, we are extracting up the operating system as well as the application. That's called the custom image. And you can use this particular custom image to get up a server again. Perfect. Great. Clear guys. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is that let's do it. Let's get it up. Um, here we are. I select it and I click into this and it says multiple options start suspend reset delete all these kind of things and here you see create a new machine image fine okay so if let's say for example when i have logged into this particular server this i let's say for example here i install a vlc media player i have installed some kind of a game any kind of a thing activity now that particular operating system not only you know uh, hold the default files or folders it also hold my critical files or folders or my games movies folders all the kind of things in place right so what i'm doing is that i'm creating up a custom image from that particular server see a, a machine image contain vm properties metadata permission and data from all that attached this fine okay let's create a name of it uh, let me name it amit machine image fine it yes for your respective requirement you can give the description it's not compulsory okay source vm instance i would say uh, is one fine the source of the vm instance the vm where from where it got taking up this particular image it is one that server one okay whether you want it to be present in multi-region or in the region i would like to go for multi-region it means that now this particular vm we are going to create or this image we are going to create it up would be present in every region fine okay i go to, and here we have the encryption part we will be exploring it in today's session only i click into the create part And see, this is the machine Amit machine image is right now is in it's been creating and I already have two others this random name one and another uh, I would say machine with the name of Amit is already present there in this case okay so it's starting it up guys got the idea what this particular custom image is all about so guys if someone ask you that what is custom image what is custom image is anyone how would you define a custom image? Custom image means that your operating system. Correct, correct, shall we? Right, that is a custom of you have in place. So right now, as you can see it up, it has been created up. Now, once it's been created, I will be using it up at the time of creation of a server, a brand new server. Fine. Okay. So it's clicking a little bit of a time. We have to be patient with it. Don't rush. If it, I would say, hardly it takes two or three minutes. So we have to wait for it. In the meantime, again, I'm uh, drawing it for you. Fine that what actually we have done and we have again what we are going to do so let's say for example this is the server one you have it's still being created okay so in the meantime this is the server you guys you have in place fine server first s1 fine okay in this particular s1 what you have is that you have two components operating system as well as the hardware and the operating system okay you have the operating system okay so guys whenever i what i do is that i am creating up a custom image in that particular case guys what i will be doing is that i will be creating this is the custom image that i will be creating it up this one absolutely ganesh yes you can do it up okay so this is the operating system as well as the application that you have installed by yourself this is called the custom image fine okay now what i can do is that after it up i can use this particular custom image to create up a server so let's say for example there is a server which is called by the name of s3 s3 is server i have in place fine in the aws we have a resource with this particular name but right now in the gcp there is a server with the name of s3 and what i will be doing is that i will be using up some different hardware completely different hardware with very high on configuration with the name of h3 and what I will be doing is that in that particular case, I will be 
using this custom image fine operating system plus the application in this particular scenario fine that's the case here so you see it up okay operating system plus application i would say here as well so in this case this this and this are all the same fine this is a normal operating system you have in place this is the custom one and this is the that that we are using it up fine okay that's what we are going through it's still in the process okay wait let's i think you got an idea what it is all about the custom image part it's still being created up okay so let me take use it up the older one because i think it's take, it will take more minutes but uh, let's not waste up a time uh, let's create use these machines we have in place custom emis uh, let me use it up and i click into it fine you can see the machine type e2 medium okay perfect so now you click into it fine create an instance and see guys you click into it all these things are there right create a vm fine reset the password of that particular vm all this kind of an activity whatever you're doing it up at what particular minute it's been displayed up in the notification panel as well okay perfect so and now what i'm doing is that i am using up a creating up a server and in that particular server i'm using up a custom image so the name could be you know amit custom image fine uh, it could be present in any location let's say for example i want to uh, deploy it up in where it's in europe asia pacific i want to deploy it up in mumbai region fine in zone let's say for zone a fine uh, if family see hardware part i can completely different that's why i tool it up hardware can be completely different in this particular case i will be using i can use n2 n3 whatever it is but i'm sticking with the e2 fine families can be completely different the hardware configuration can be can be completely different limitations i would say yeah shall be the limitation is that it only contains your operating system information not about the hardware fine okay you scroll down and here we see that see you have your disk source okay i have in this particular disk source from your machine image so that what it's saying is that it is name amit custom image fine and here the disk source fine or the about the operating system from your machine image it will be picking it up clear that's the case okay so i click into it and what will happen is that a server will be deployed up with this custom instance or custom image right you go to the boot disk and see this is what you get it up disk source from your machine image fine great so this is it this is the thing that we have created up about the custom custom image clear guys got the idea what is the story of this custom image is everyone any doubt any question till here let's come back to it okay great perfect see we have this particular now up and running fine again see i can go to i can click into it i can use it up to create up a server launch in uh, create an instance fine or the server same process you can name it up you scroll down you can change completely the hardware configuration you can completely completely change it up as well fine and when you go to the bootloader you see from machine image fine this is the catch so it's saying that the operating system for this particular hardware would be taken up from the custom emi that you have set it up okay that is the catch so let's come back to it you click into it and what i will be doing is i will be deleting it up because otherwise i will be charged for that fine i have deleted up again i go to the vm instance and this particular vm instance what i will be doing is that i will be deploy i will be deleting this particular server up as well okay great so now guys let's talk about this particular static ip and dynamic ip two things we have in place static ip and the dynamic ip so there is two type of thing we have in place static ip and another one we have in place which is called the dynamic ip dynamic means that it will be changing it up the ip will be automatically changing it up by default something goes happens something wrong happen with that particular server where it gets restarted in that particular scenario what happens is that the ip changes so remember this is the nature by default okay till the time you do not do any kind of a configuration till the time you do not uh, involve dns dscp or static ip into this particular play 
what will happen the basic nature by default of this gcp is that it provides up a dynamic ip dynamic public ip would i would say it up to the servers fine it means that when i stop the server and again restart it up in that particular case the interesting part is that it will change but it's not a guarantee right okay so that's the reason what happens in this particular case is that the server has the dynamic public ip you stop it up let's do it up right yesterday we did up a hands on thing with it fine but uh, unfortunately we get up the same ip perfect so see in the notification part every kind of thing resetting the password in place right now okay after a few minutes it will be going giving you a particular option that you know deleted the particular uh, machine image so in the notification you get every kind of an activity where you do whatever i have done right 11 uh, uh 17 hours back i have deleted up a vm with the name of one okay one day back i have deleted the vm with the name of one those kind of things right so every kind of an activity you want to trace it down you can do it up in this particular part in the gcp clear okay great perfect so this is the particular server we are running it up with the name of one now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to select it up and i'm going to stop it okay you click into it and you have stop suspend reset delete delete means it's gone it's completely gone every kind of a data application present inside this particular vm it's gone so you should be absolutely aware about what kind of an action you're doing it up and suspend means it's temporary kind of i would say in a, in a, it's at this in a sleep mode you can say it up okay you can just uh, again activate it up fine okay great so I would, what I will be doing is that I will be stopping it up. Before stopping it, let me just copy it up the public IP. Okay, I hope it changes now. Fine, it's very rare that you get the the IP, the public IP, the dynamic IP just remains the same even after you have. This is the public IP right now I have in place. Let me stop the server. Okay, so you're stopping the server in place. Okay, you see the notification stopping one and a notification has been started to create the moment this particular server stops You will be seeing it up on note in the notification. It will be registered Okay, I get up in some sort of an alert as well using up the RDP that some sort of a problem going here as well Okay, so the VM has started in this particular case right as well as you can go by the notification that seems right the it has started perfect so now what I will be doing is that I will be going it up to a uh, I will be duplicating it up now I need to create the static IP how to do it up how to create your own static IP right okay so for that first you need to do something you have to go to the VPC VPC network I will be doing it up and there I will be creating up a static IP just wait a minute VPC network works okay right I go to the IP address and now in the IP address, you have two things, right? Automatically, all I would say, uh, one is an internal IP, one is an external IP, right? Of the server, one. See, VM instance, one. Internal IP and VM instance, one. External IP. I click into the internal IP address, it will be one only present there of one, an external IP address. Fine? Okay. Clear, guys? Got the hill here? Perfect. Now here you see that it said reserve external static IP. I click into it. I click into the reserve a uh, external IP in place. Okay, let's name it up. I would say uh, Amit static address. Okay, a static IP I would say that are creating it up. Description is completely up to you for your own simplicity, but it doesn't change anything. It's just a kind of a comment you have in place. Okay. Uh, premium, uh, yeah, I would like to put it up. Okay. And version IPv4, region, uh, just global forwarding. I would say stick with the region, particularly I keep it. And remember, wherever you are creating up your static IP, it should be same region, same place, wherever your particular server is already present there. So guys, where is actually my server being created? In US East for a North Virginia zone A. So that's where I'm going to create my static IP. So I will be going to North Virginia, North Virginia. Okay, now it say attach to. Where do you want to attach it up? I click into it and see it has selected one. If I just change the region, let's say for example, I want to go to... Um, you know, I go to Hong Kong, right? 
okay in hong kong there is no server that has been running it up i click to now attach to and say none fine so it keep this thing in mind that the static ip would be created in that specific region wherever you have already your target server running where you want to attach it up fine so that's the reason i will be going it up to the north virginia i will be taking it up to the north which is north virginia and now when i click into it now it says uh, one i select the one great and i do scroll it up i reserve it let me look into everything okay reserve it fine now what happens is that now i'm assigning a static ip to it okay great never assume a scenario where two public ip will be provided to a server okay one static another dynamic no that's not going to happen whenever you allot a dynamic ip sorry whenever you allot a static ip it the dynamic ip has been removed okay that's the reason so in the chat that you see 34 150 190 113 that's a dynamic win which is by default fine okay definitely when you restarted up this ip changed up but now i have assigned up a static ip see create up an ip address with amit static ip and i have assigned it up as well so this is that particular one automatically it has been selected now i paste it up here in the chat okay this one is the static ip fine okay now you click into it now what you do you stop the server yeah see here it says that amit clip uh, the static ip okay i think now it has been created okay my bad okay so now what will happen in this particular case is that this is an external ip and it is static fine that's the catch here okay so what will happen in that particular case is that you go to the all and you see this is static and this is ephemeral it means it's dynamic it will be changing it up fine okay great now you come back to it and in this particular case what you do is that you refresh it so you see that your particular server has now been stopped your instance has stopped in this particular scenario what's an ip you have 34 150 190 113 clear okay let's restart it up let's see if it changes or not now See guys, now in this particular case, the server is up and running, and the IP is the same. Fine. So that's the whole objective we have in place. So 34, 150, 190, 113. -1 this is the static IP is being provided to you. But remember, whenever you are using up the static IP, you are charged for that. Okay. So I refresh it up. Perfect. And you see how a static IP is attached to it. Okay. The both the IPs are exactly the same we have. Perfect. Great. So now what I need to do is that. Okay, so how do you repeat up a static IP? So what you do is that you go to the this VPC network. Fine. In this particular VPC network, you have this uh, external IP address. Fine. Okay. And here you get reserve external static IP address. You click into it, and there you create up a static IP. There you specify the region where you want to create the static IP, and then specify that at which particular server you want to attach to. Once you have done it up, you are good to go. You click into it and find a static IP would be created up and attached to your respective server in place. Fine. That's the catch here. Great. Okay. So a static IP has been attached to my particular server. Perfect. Okay. Now. So now once we are done with the static IP part, static we have done with the what is static IP and dynamic IP. We have done the practical part in place. Now, guys, let's talk about new concept in place, which is called by the name of scalability. Okay, that scale we can scale the servers and can again come back to the normal as well. Fine. So it can increase as well as decrease. Okay. So that's what we do in the scalability part. Then we have guys, you know, we have two type of scalability: vertical scalability 
and something which is called by the name of horizontal scalability increasing the size of it right so in vertical scalability guys what we do is that we increase the capacity of one single server let's say for example there is a was a server or let's say for example there was a laptop in place fine so what that particular laptop configuration was that let me just explain you through a laptop configuration the configuration was i7 uh, okay not just i7 i would say i would consider i3 fine 12th generation okay 16 gb of ram that's the configuration i have for that particular laptop but let's say for example i want to run up a certain kind of an application okay and that particular application needs some more high end configuration so what i do is that i change the processor i upgrade the system and i make that particular pc or the laptop more more powerful okay that is what's called the vertical scalability right as you can see in this particular diagram this was a server with what was happening the configuration was one core cpu one 8 gb of ram ssd then same server what you did is that you have made him dual core 16 gb of ram 3 tb of ssd and again you have increased capacity quad core cpu 32 gb of ram and 5 tb of ssd so same server server one server one server one so they these are not three different servers these are three stages of one single server in place right that's called vertical scalability we have in place so you are increasing the size of a one single server you're just increasing the capacity overall capacity of one single server that's called the vertical scalability then we have another one in place which is called the horizontal scalability in the horizontal scalability what happens is that you have a particular piece of a server and now what you're doing is that you are deploying multiple other servers in place right so that's what you do in the vertical scalability so say one server is there with a capacity of one core 8 gb and 1 tb of NSP. so what i'm doing is that i am deploying three server with exact same configuration so the pool of servers distributing up the load and they almost have you know same thing right three core because each one is having one core so all three combined together to come three core of cpu then all of their ram combines together to form 24 gb of ram increases server counts perfect and another image i have is that for in com uh, comparison here we are vertical scaling and horizontal scaling in vertical scaling the server is the same but the capacity increases it up you're just making the particular server increase just scaling up we call it by the name of scaling up as well in where first of all the capacity was this very little then you in increase the capacity so remember these are not two different servers these are the same server but in different different situation this was the first lower end version then you have upgraded it to the much more powerful version that's called vertical scaling or scaling up then you have horizontal scaling in this particular what you've done is that previously you were having only one server then with this server all you have deployed two other servers with exact same configuration so in the horizontal scaling the configuration remains the same, but the number of the servers increases up. Right? That's the basic difference between vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Now, let's talk about a very interesting service in the GCP, which is called by the name of load balancer. So, load balancer is a kind of a device we have in place, guys. What it does is that it distributes the upcoming traffic. Okay. So, let's say, for example, what happens is that multiple clients are coming to um, the endpoint or to the load balance so what the load balance would be doing is that in the end in the back end it has multiple servers and then what it will do is that it will redistribute the upcoming traffic in those respective servers that's what we do in the load balancer part clear okay great so simple idea simple is that uh, this is the particular load balancer you have in place fine or oh, sorry this is an internet people comes to it and here in the load balancer they comes it what happens is that load balancer would be redistributing it to the first client this then to this then to this right this is called a round robin algorithm we have in place so that's what the load balancer does it helps you in redistribute the traffic so that only one server does not face up all of the problem or, or does not face up uh, much of the i would say the burden that upcoming traffic the weight distribution is equally divided among the them okay so now let's talk about different kind of data states fine okay 
just give me a minute let me do a hands on thing as well for jumping into the different kind of a data states in place let's do a hands on thing of the load balancer okay then we moving ahead with the further the topics in place okay perfect so let me just show you with the gcp part okay here here we are here we so again let's come back to the vpc part and you have the external ip address here static select it okay and if i let's say for example i just want to click into it uh where it was okay we just need to specify the respective position so see when i'm deleting this particular static ip it's saying me release static ip address to release this ip address to the static ip address that is not in use it is right now been utilized it is used by this vm1 so what i will do is that i go to the vm1 and this particular vm1 i will be right what i will do i will go to the more action create a book group based on this vm label it up i will delete it okay let me delete it up there is other way we can detach it as well no problem with that okay but i just right now delete it up as well okay you can use any one of the mechanism another thing with this particular static ip is that what you can do is you can move it from one server to an another one that is also you can move it up your particular static ip once it's created and it's attached to server 1 you can move it from server 1 to server 2 fine that you can do it up as well without any problem okay so we will be creating a load balancer but before moving into the load balancer part let me just clean up the stuff okay vm instance is there vm has gone see deleted the respective vm okay now go to it to it refresh it if you have any refresh let's refresh it go to the ip address fine and here you see used by none you click into it go to option release the static ip address release it okay remember to release the static ip as soon as possible otherwise you will be charged for that okay even if you do not use you are still charged if you use it you are still charged so that's the case okay perfect no row to display it up so you does not have any kind of a static ip now in place now let's go for load balancer okay great so before coming into the load balancer part load balancing let's look into it okay so you have uh, you know in network services you have multiple other options in place like cloud domain cloud dns cloud cdn lot of stuff but if you sing with the load balancer fine so we have to specify this back end front end all these kind of things so what i do i click into create a load balancer okay now when i am creating up a load balancer in place a important thing which will be needed in up for which will be called by the name of instance group it's a resource group you have in place okay let's prove proceed further i will then i will be showing you how to create that particular instance group so this is that right type of load balancer two type of load balancer you have in place one is the application load balancer which is used for http and https traffic another one is called the network load balancer which is there for tcp udp or ssl traffic so if the traffic is for a tcp udp ssl traffic you go for the network load balancer and if it is for http and https you go for the application load balancer we will be using up the application load balancer in place okay that's the catch clear yeah. now once we are clear with this which kind of a load balancer we want to pick we have two kind of a load balancer in place once you selected the application load balancer you click into it and then you have this one public facing the second thing is public facing or the internal so where do i should want this particular load balance to you know receive the traffic from okay if i just go by the image right in this particular image what you have is that that you have receiving up the particular traffic from the outside world okay that's what you're doing in this particular case great fine so as per this particular perfect what we will do is that we will be making up the load balancer for internet that the traffic should be coming from the internet that's what we're going to do right so we have this public facing internet and we have internal one so if you want to let's say for example do a internal communication and internet 
uh, load balancer routes requests from client to backend using private IP address for your internal communication. If let's say, for example, inside your respective organization, your server want to communicate with the load balancer, but the load balancer and the servers both are inside the organization using up and communicating using up the private IP, go for the internal. But generally, you have this public facing in place, right? The external client, see, in this particular case, what happens? The external client is there, it comes to the internet and then it comes to the external load balancer and then he's get redirected in the back end to the server in place. Fine. So we'll be choosing up the public facing external server. Okay, once you have done that, you have global or single region deployment. Do you want this particular to be present in multiple region or in just one single region only? Uh, I would say I will be going for the global workload. Fine, even if it's costly, but okay, no problem with that. It means this particular load balancer is be present in multiple location, right? Multi region uses for better performance if you have client distributed globally. Fine, or if you want to deploy back into multiple responses. If that particular sources are deployed in multiple different or vehicle region, what you do in that particular case, you go for best of global workloads. Okay, great. See, one of the workload, one of the server is workload means server. Okay, so. So what happens in this particular case is that you have this workload. So what is this particular workload? Workload means guys, the server, right? Clear? Clear the idea what this particular server is all about? In this particular part, what thing you have is that you have this particular workload in different, different region. But remember, it's completely based upon your respective choice what you're using it up. If let's say, for example, your respective environments are putting it up in different regions, you go for global. If you it is present in the same region, you go for uh, a specific region, okay? If the servers are present in the same region, you go for this one, the region one, and if the servers are present in different, different regions, then you go for the global presence, fine? Next, now click into the next part. Okay. Okay, wait a minute, what's it? Okay, let's, right now I'm the review part. Load balance generation, okay. Global external load balancer, fine with it. Next, yeah, create a load balancer. You're about to create a application load balancer. Fine, it's will be public facing and global. Great, let's configure it up. Okay, there is another phase we have will be looking into. We have these things we have to look for. Fronted configuration, backend configuration, routing table, that's kind of thing, okay? Front-end configuration. What is the story of this particular front-end configuration? Front-end means where from where this particular thing would be receiving of the traffic. It means the location about the load balancer. So in the front-end configuration, you have to specify about the load balancer, IP address, its port number, fine. That's thing. So it has two components. One is the front-end, another is the back-end. Front-end means that which is that particular party load balancer, which is a particular load balancer who is going to Analyze that particular traffic. Fine, that's the front end. Okay, you have to specify the IP address, the port number, and then you have the back end. These are the back end the servers that are present in the back end. Fine, then you have to specify that as well. Okay, generally, particularly in the GCP, what you do is that you does not need to provide specifically uh, the server to the load balancer. What you do is that you create up something which is called something which is very interesting, which is called by the name of instance group. So you create up a group. You make this put to server part of that particular group and then you attach that group to the load balancer. Okay, so whenever anyone make up an uh, attempt or a traffic or a concern to the load balancer, load balancers go to the group and inside the group, all the servers that are present there, the traffic has been redistributed to them. Fine, that's what we have in this case. Okay, so we have to create something which is called the instance group in this case. Fine, okay, front end configuration in this particular front end configuration. Right. Okay. So in this particular case, what I will be doing is that I will be naming it up the front end configuration. So guys, what is that particular front end configuration? What it is? Absolutely. Right. Not request hitting the LLB. It would be the LLB itself. Right. It would be the load balancer. We have to specify the load balancer in place. Right. The name of the load balancer, all kind of stuff in place. Okay. Now let's specified up the load balance ip the port number all these kind of things we need to specify it right let me write down namit load balancer okay protocol http we have in place port 80 
there it from you know in this particular port it will be accepting that particular traffic okay great so other advanced feature as well uh, other kind of time you know timeout features and other things we will do it as well you can specify the ip address as well okay it's completely completely up to you then you go for the backend configuration in the backend configuration you have to specify the backend servers i click into create a backend server okay now in the backend server right it's going to ask me the name i would say xyz right it's now asked me about the backend type instance group i have to choose the instance group right i have to choose the instance group in place other options are present there zone network endpoint and other kind of thing in place but i will be for the simplicity using up the instance group in place fine okay now i have to create up a backend there is no instance group right see in the new backend there is no instance group so what i have to do is that i have to go it up and create up an instance group in place so what you go to the compute engine and here you have instance group you click into it instance group is nothing it's just a group and inside it up you have multiple servers in place so this is your instance group and inside it you will be having server one server two server three so whenever you attach this instance group to a load balancer what happens is that the traffic comes to it and inside it will go first will go into this then to this then to this in place okay what will happen in this particular case we have to create up an instance group up uh, let's guys let's stick with this particular practical okay yeah so we have this instance group right okay so in this particular case what i will be doing is that i will be creating up a practical instance group let's do it up okay before creating up a instance group you have to have a servers in place let me first of all before in going to jumping into the instance group part let me create up a server do i have any have a server hmm, no i do not i will look into create a server one server i will be naming it with the name of one fine okay e2 and yeah keep everything by default okay no problem with that allow https fine create it so in this target group guys what i'm doing is that i am attaching only one server okay but using it up you cannot deploy other servers as well because otherwise if i just deploy another server in place it will take a lot of lot, eat up a lot of time in place so what i'm doing right now is that inside the target group i'm creating i'm attaching one server that's the catch fine so what that my, my particular architecture would be looking like this that i have this particular target group okay in this particular target group or we also call it by the name of instance group inside it up you will be having up a server with the name of this s1 or something like that and then you have the load balancer load balancer comes first of all to the target group and then target group request picks up the request and take it to the server in place and then take it to the another server so in my particular case i have only one so this is how the architecture of my case would be looking like when i will be having only one server inside the target group okay or the instance group and the load balancer send up a request there okay great so the server is up and running let's give it up a nine and okay as i told to you so don't rush with it okay it's still refreshing uh and i think we are going to do it okay great so now what i will be doing is that i will be creating up a instance group fine okay i go to the instance group create an instance group fine and now here what i will be doing is that i am going to specify the instance group name what it will do it will be one okay or anything uh xyz something like that or let me just write it proper name amit instance group okay great you scroll down it's taking for the location which kind of location do you want this particular instance group 
uh, I would say multi region fine or single region then if you see single region you have to specify it as well in my case when I have selected this bit on it let's just make a duplicate copy of this as well you have the VM instance and then you have the instance group it is present in US Central 1F okay create by instance group okay let's create up an instance group one okay keep let's keep it up fine okay now uh, I would say the location we actually want that we want it up okay so I would say single region the region uh, in this case is US central 1f US central where it is 1 F fine the server should be present in this particular region you can choose multiple other regions as well if the servers are present in different different regions in my particular case the server that I'm attaching to the target group or the instance group is present in only one single region okay it's in US central 1F uh, US central 1F perfect I do the auto scaling now I scroll it down and here I see a lot of problems of the auto scaling part okay the minimum number of instances I have one the maximum number of instances I can reach to is 10 so this is the minimum this is the maximum right okay the maximum capacity great so auto scaling signal says you CPU utilization touch 60% you create up in another server increase perfect okay now scroll down in this particular case what you do is that you can do auto scaling schedule as well you can do period uh, installation initialization period a lot of other stuff in place right i am just skipping it up okay port mapping and all this kind of stuff keep uh, update during vm instance repair yeah let's keep it simple as well as possible okay auto scaling i'm enable it up see this what this means is that minimum servers you can have is that it's one and then you have the maximum number of instances it's 10 Right. this is the highest capacity the server will be able to go if I just put 100 so what will happen is that this if the requirement keep on increasing it up 100 servers will be deployed up so that's the thing so maximum is 10 and minimum is 1 okay great uh, you scroll it down perfect auto reading and see action on failure what happens if that particular VM instance fails what happened in that particular case repair an instance that that's what i have selected up okay great okay i just click into create if, if make sure all the corrections are there template i will be using this particular template okay perfect i click into create okay so instance group is being created and you have to specify the template as well in this case fine okay Uh, shall we have just another session after this this webinar gets over so sorry i would not be able to extend it up perfect so this it is now in the progress fine we have to wait couple of minutes for that creation time group managed by you template it's one those kind of things you have in place uh, yeah we can accept more than uh, you can more than 10 we can extend we can extend it to 100 we can extend it to 200 it's completely up to you but remember is that if let's say for example I have set it up to 100 and as a requirement keep on increasing it up now it has created 90 servers so you have to pay for 90 servers as well keep this thing in mind okay fine that's the catch so you should need to be aware about that because that particular thing would be creating that particular server in the back end so you should be aware about that how much you can afford because see it's a machine right whatever kind of a requirement you set it up it to 
it will be performing it up without any kind of an hesitation but at the end of the day at the end of the month you have to you are the one or your organization is the one which is going to pay the bill for okay great uh, it will take up a time okay for this instance group to be created up okay and now what you need to do is that we need to go to the load balancer for the servers you will be charged you will be charged for the respective load balancer you will be charged for your service creation of your instance group for all of the activity we are doing it up we will be charged for that but remember you get a 300 dollars of a credit for 90 days so whatever the charge would be it will be deducted from that 300 dollars into it okay so what you need to do is that it will take up a time okay at least i would say it will take 10 minutes for sure fine we have already done five minutes how did never get to the back end it's pretty simple you go to the uh i would say load balancer and go here in the back end configuration click into the back end configuration fine click into it create a back end server and here we are back end server you name it fine and here you have to specify the instance group okay instance group one okay i think it's not on see that's the problem right how to, that sometime if you go at hip here and you see that instance group one it is showing me right now but when i go back to the instance group right now it is in a process don't fall into this trap till the time you see a red uh, sorry a green flag okay everything is fine do not proceed ahead even if you are getting at this particular option because trust me if i move ahead with the selection of this particular instance group in the coming days or in the coming steps i will be getting up in errors because this thing has not been configured it's in a transitional phase till the time things are not okay here i cannot move further even if the option has been visible to me okay that's the catch great so you go to the load balancer okay you have to specify it out here that particular load balancer part okay your central one f i think that's this is the one it, we are creating it up yes okay and then you have to uh nothing else then you have to specify this particular instance group and you're good to go then skip everything because all these things are very in much more detail like what is the detailed time to live how important it is right that's completely for a session i would say and you click into the create a load balancer would be created up okay that's it that's just how you create up a load balancer but for this instance group it will take up a time fine and i think it's getting up in errors as well fail to create up an instance group okay yesterday also i was getting this particular same errors i tried it again and again uh, you know i was able to resolve it up okay so same problem no problem with that anytime you face up an issue one single zone i will be looking for that particular where it's actually my server located at us central one us central one us central one f i would say okay uh, uh in this particular case i can go for two by two fine okay no problem with that here everything default create this particular load balancer template is going to be one and here we are fine but remember now it's going to take up a time okay that was the thing so those kind of things keep on happening it up yesterday i was again doing up a practical for this particular load balancer creating up in this uh you know instance group without any issue it gave me a pop-up sometime there is some kind of an issue or technical issue going on from the server side from the cloud provider side okay so don't worry don't panic in that particular mode fine just what you do either completely restart it look into the configuration or dump it up okay so guys this is how you create up your respective load balancer we are skipping it up because this instance group would be taking up a lot of our time and simple is that right you got up an idea what you need you have the front end configuration which talks about which uh, the in configuration about your load balancer back end talks about which are those servers in place and in the back end the very important component you have in place is your instance group which controls which have multiple instances present inside it okay and routing rules talks about how the traffic will be redirected from your respective load balancer 
from your respective load balancer to the target group this is your what this is your target group and inside this target group you have server one you have server two you have server three you have server four fine that's what you do target group or the instance group you have in place so this particular the path in between it's called the routing rule how would you route a traffic from the load balancer to these diff different kind of a servers present inside the this i would say you know uh, instance group okay fine great and then you are good to go okay i think we are we are fine with it it's working right okay let me just refresh it up okay i see fine okay refresh one more time perfect so now the instance group is working fine see the same configuration no problem with that same everything only difference i made it a little bit of a difference and i'm good to with it so sometimes this kind of technical issues comes into it no problem with that okay so instance group is there now i come back to it i go to the back end i click and let me just write anything right okay in this back end part i select it up port number would be the listening port would be 80 in this case Yes, I think the port port would be 80 because that's when it have in place. Okay. Perfect. You scroll down with the load balancer part after I've done every kind of thing in place. Just give me a minute, guys. Okay, perfect, right? You scroll it down, keep everything create, and click into create part. Make sure all the correct is okay. Let's do help check. We have let's create up a help check as well. Let's create a given number name. Fine protocol proxy logs. Okay, protocol 80 has been there. Health criteria. I keeping it that check at every five seconds about the health of the server. That's what we're talking about in the health criteria. Defines how health is determined, how often to check, how long to wait for a response, and how many unsuccessful or failed attempt to uh, are deceived okay so health check is all about it's kind of a feature of the load balancer for the servers as i told you multiple servers are attached to the load balancer in place so this health criteria checks is that what is the condition of those servers in place so every five seconds this particular thing would be checked fine that's kind of thing so a lot of things are there so but this check interval means that every five seconds this particular load balancer would be looking and giving you a report about the status of the load balance the status of the servers that is in there click on the safe part here we are and i click into it okay okay and i click it to it load balancer name what should be the name of the load balancer i would say amit load balancer so simple is that you need only two things into it first thing is the load balancer part that in initial phase the front end part you will be needing up an ip the listening port all these things and then you have the back end configuration back end means the servers but directly you cannot connect to this load balancer directly so you need up a target group or an instance group instance group is nothing it's a group of servers fine so you create up an instance group attach multiple different instances inside it and then attach that particular instance group or the target group to the load balance by itself okay that comes under the backend configuration and then you're good to go you click into create and see because definitely for sure this creation of the load balance takes a little bit of a time so yeah we are fine with it okay it will take at least i will take three three to four minutes definitely for sure this load balance would be taking it okay great so guys this was that how to create up a load balancer in the gcp perfect now guys let's understand because see remember this load balancer is going to take up a time we cannot wait for that because it will be completely the waste of time it will at least take uh, five to six minutes okay great but you get up an idea right that how to create up a load balancer you need only two things one is the front end one is the back end and that's it 
the backend generally you have the target group and inside the target group you have the instances clear guys any doubt any question till here guys what is target group or the instance group what kind of things that the target group or the instance group hold so the target group contains what or the target group or the instance group contains the server inside it up and then you attach the target group to the load balancer okay correct perfect so see guys okay we have created up the load balancer okay it was it was pretty quick okay great here we can see it up see the load balance has been created up application load balancer external protocol and a little bit of a notification i'm getting it up it's an unhealthy because zero network endpoint groups are there this is a thing configuration uh, it's a kind of a completely a different configuration we have in this particular case fine but this is the load balancer it's present there perfect now guys let's talk about different kinds of states of data we have in place we have the data at rest data in transit data in use the stored data the resting data the data which is in a resting state we have in place okay that's what we call the data at rest and the best example of it so data at rest means that particular piece of a data which is not being utilized right now it is just lying sitting up there that is called the data at rest it's not been utilized it's not been processed at all then you have another kind of a state of data which is called by the name of data in transit okay how, uh, how many different kind of a protocols what are the very famous protocols we have in place to protect the data in transit the data in transit talks about the movement of the data from one end to another one fine or from one place to another one correct https protocol we have in place fine so what happens is that using the using up that particular protocol in place you can encrypt the pc of an information and using it up it will be moving from one place to another one so what's the benefit if the data has been encrypted and it's been moving from one end to another one if the hacker in between captures the packet captures the data what happens is that in place is that in that respective scenario your respective data would not be able to be accessed by the attacker in place fine that's what happens in the data in transit then you have another one in place which is called by the name of data in use so this particular data in use means that the particular data has been utilized fine okay let's say for example you are watching up a movie so what happens in that particular case is that the data from your respective hard disk is going correct right to your ram to your cpus in place so it's been putting into that so your data has been utilized it has been processed it is time on the cpu and it has been utilized in place right so that's the case absolutely the data getting process it is sitting right now in your ram in your respective cpu that is data in use so we have these three very important stages of data okay great which is very very important we need to have a very good understanding about these three different stages of data because as we progress ahead in the session we have something which is called by the name of you know encryption and because in order to increase understand encryption we need to have an un good understanding about different kind of the stages we have for the data because another concept we have which is called by the name of kms in the gcp that how using this particular J kms oh, sorry the, yeah kms you can create your own key and encrypt the data so the next topic guys we have in place is called block file and st uh, block storage and file storage as well okay so this is the topic we will be covering up guys tomorrow right so guys this is for today tomorrow we will be exploring from this block storage and file storage and tomorrow we are going to explore about kms as well as we are going to talk about different kind of database and iam identity and access management in the gcp how it really looks like okay guys clear with it so guys this was for today's session thanks everyone and let's meet tomorrow